students, myself Dr. Divya, STEM professor at Department of Chemistry, Institute of Analytical Engineering. So today we will discuss the concept of lubricants and its properties as a part of engineering materials. So here are the topics, lubricants, what are lubricants, then the characteristics of lubricants, what are the different characteristics, then classification of lubricants, lubricants are different uh, types, they are solid, semi-solid and liquid lubricants. So depending on the uh, uh, density and its uh, applications, this classification is done. Then properties of lubricants. So these are very important like cold and pore point and its determination, how the determination is done. Then flash and power, uh, fire point and its determination. Then the important one, viscosity and viscosity index. So we will see in detail. So lubricant, uh, lubricant. What is a lubricant? It is a substance, uh, generally organic substance that reduces the friction between two surfaces. So whatever can be the surfaces, either it is a metal or any other uh, surface, the, it reduces the friction between these two surfaces. So that ultimately reduces the heat generated when the surface moves. How, when does the surface move? For example, if we see this machinery or the automobiles, there is uh, two surface metal surfaces that are moving constantly. So when they are uh, moving constantly, there is heat generated. So this heat will be reduced due to lubricant application of lubricant. So upon application of lubricant, the heat generated will be reduced and also will be functioning smoothly. So, it may also function as transmitting forces, then transporting uh, foreign sub, uh, particles or heating or cooling the surfaces. So, that is the property or the function of that particular lubricant in application. So, this property is called as lubricity. So, the working act of the lubricant is called as lubricity. For example, if we see these two surfaces, surface 1 and surface 2, they are without oil or lubricant here. So what happens? There is a rupture or rubbing of these two surfaces takes place constantly during its function. But whenever there is a lubricant uh, between these two surfaces, then the uh, rubbing of the surfaces reduces. So this is the most important aspect or uh, function of a particular lubricant in applications. So what are the characteristics? So when do we really need lubricant? Why do we really need a lubricant? And what are its properties and characteristics that impart its activity? So high boiling point, it has high boiling point and low freezing point. So it should not get freezed upon application. So therefore it should have low freezing point in order to stay the liquid within a wide range of temperatures because for example we use from room temperature to very high temperatures so the automobiles or the um, machinery what runs are at high temperatures and also at room temperatures therefore it should have low freezing point so that the liquid flows continuously so it should have high viscosity index, then thermal stability is nothing but should operate at high temperatures, then hydraulic stability, demulsivity. So demulsivity is nothing but separation from its water, separation of oil from water. So if you see this uh, test, demulsivity uh, test, if you see this, there is separating layers there are two different separating layers. So this is the oil or the lubricant, lubricant and this is water for example. So there should be separate uh, ability to separate from its solvent. So different solvent. In corrosion prevention, so the lubricant where uh, whatever is applying, we are applying to automobiles should be preventing from corrosion. So it should not corrode. It should not corrode to the um, uh, application part should be highly resistant to oxidants, oxidation. That means it should not absorb oxygen and uh, that will cause corrosion to the parts that are being applied. So if we, for example, if you see this picture, it is rusting before application of, before application of lubricant. 
so what happens when the lubricant is applied it is smooth and no rust no rust so it is because of presence of lubricant so that is a function where it doesn't allow the oxidation of surface and also prevents corrosion so the classification comes uh, coming to the classification there are three types of uh, lubricants they are liquid lubricants then semi solid lubricants and solid lubricants so what are liquid lubricants these includes the animal oils or vegetable oils then petroleum oils and synthetic lubricants so these comes under the liquid lubricants nothing but it is in the form of liquid so it will uh, flow freely and examples of oil are tallow oil and whale oil so if you see this is the tallow oil tallow oil and this is the whale oil that is obtained from the animals so tallow oil generally from the beef and whale oil from the whale so uh, vegetable oils are castor oil and palm oil so castor oil uh, as we know castors from castors we can obtain oil coal pressed oil and also from the palm tree that we obtain is a palm oil so uh, uh, we also generally know that these have high viscosity when compared to other oils so this comes under vegetable oils then petroleum oils in petroleum oils petroleum fractions like crude oil then synthetic lubricants are like polyglycol and silicones so this polyglycol also has good viscosity good viscosity and silicone oils so these are the different types of uh, liquid lubricants that are uh, available like from animal origin vegetable origin petroleum and synthetic oils then semi solid lubricants semi solid lubricants are petroleum or jellies so we will see in detail semi solid lubricants are formed by emulsifying oil and fat so oil and fat when emulsified together will form semi solid lubricant this is done with the help of thickening agents what are the thickening agents soap of sodium calcium lithium aluminum etc at high temperatures so the soaps of these metals are used as thickening agents to obtain semi solid lubricants so in this we have three different types like soda based we will see first soda based soda based is nothing but sodium soaps are used in this case sodium soaps are used as thickening agent in mineral or petroleum oil so they are slightly soluble in water but can operate it up to 175 degrees centigrade so this is an example of soda based lubricant lubricant so if you see this is semi solid so it is not really freely moving or not solid in structure so it is semi solid so it is formed with the sodium soaps used as thickening agent then comes the lithium based in this case lithium soaps are used in emulsifying with petroleum oil so they are water resistant and can be used up to 15 degrees centigrade even at low temperatures so this is an example lithium grease lithium grease which is darker in color then calcium based calcium soaps are used in emulsifying process and they are also water resistant and can be used up to 80 degrees centigrade so depending on our applications different types of uh, lubricants can be selected so at high temperatures soap and petroleum oil are separated from each other so these are the different examples of uh, semi solid lubricants then comes the third one solid lubricants wherein for example uh, graphite molybdenum disulfide boron nitride are commonly used and predominantly used solid lubricants so they can operate at high temperature some pressures why because they have a layer like structure layer like structure for example in graphite they have layer structures if you see this the graphite structure has layers that are held together with the help of van der waal forces so what will these do this will help in facilitating the easy sliding of one upon the other so that will give a soapy texture and also non inflammable with this property it can operate till 450 degree centigrade even mixed with oil or water so this is an example of graphite lubricant under solid lubricants 
Then the molybdenum disulfide um, uh, lubricant. It is like a sandwich like structure wherein molybdenum and sulfur uh, um, atoms are in layers. So the hexagonal layer of molybdenum lies in between the two hexagonal layers of sulfur. So these are sulfur, these are sulfur layers. So the molybdenum layer is in between these sulfur atom layers. So like graphite, each layers are held together with weak van der Waals forces and can uh, also be uh, used up to 400 degrees centigrade. So these two have similar properties, but it is different because it is used in high vacuum applications. So it adheres even more strongly to the metal and other surfaces. So this is the most important aspect for the molybdenum disulfide where it can apply it for the high vacuum applications. Then the properties of lubricants, what are the properties? The cold point and the pore point, these two properties uh, help in understanding the selection of, uh, for selecting any lubricant. So what is the cold point? The temperature at which lubricating oil becomes cloudy in appearance. So it becomes cloudy at some temperature. So that is nothing but cloud point. It is just like remember cloudy in appearance at temperature at which it becomes cloudy in appearance so called cloud point. So that is the one we have to remember. So here is uh, we can see the bottom of the oil or the lubricant is becoming cloudy in nature. If we compare with the clear, this is clear and this is cloudy. So this temperature, this temperature is nothing but cloud point. Then what is pore point? The temperature, lowest temperature at which lubricant oil is becoming semi-solid and ceases to flow. So it is resistant to flow, it is not flowing properly. So it is called as pore point. So that is the lowest temperature where it can operate. So this, if you see, this is the uh, flowing, the flow decreased, the flow more decreased. So this is the pore point, pore point. So it is like seizing the uh, flow of that particular lubricant. It indicates the suitability of lubricants used in cold condition because we are saying low temperature. So it indicates the usage at cold conditions. So if it is at, uh, for example, 1 degree centigrade, if it is the pore point, so we cannot uh, use it at 1 degree centigrade. So that is how we can help, it will help in selecting the lubricant. And good lubricant possess lower pore point. So the lower the pore point, the more we can use the lubricant. Then determination of pore point or the cold point, cloud point. So uh, this is very important because we are saying that it will help in uh, understanding or selecting the lubricant. So we should determine its cloud point and pore point of any lubricant before we apply for any automobile or machinery. So for example, this is the apparatus, apparatus used. So what does it contain? Like, uh, the sample is cooled enough to allow the formation of crystals. So there is a jar, there is a jar, this one with lubricant, lubricant, lubricant taken in the jar. So then it is maintained at minus 1 degree to 2 degree centigrade with ice, with the help of ice that this is jacket, jacket with ice and salt. So the inclusion of salt will help in um, uh, maintaining the temperature. So uh, this is the cooling jacket that will help in maintaining the temperature at minus 1 to 2 degrees centigrade. Minus 1 to 2 degrees centigrade. So what happens? Then support the jacket and jar in a vertical position. So the jar in this jacket is kept in the vertical position. So this is the support support. So the jar and the jacket, this is the jacket and jar. This is the jar. The glass one is the jar. This is the jacket. So this is kept in vertical position. If you see in the schematic uh, in a bath so that not more than 25 mm projects from the so. So this is the jacket completely not, uh, we should not allow most of the portion to expose. So that is what it uh, indicates. Then what happens? 
at each them, uh, thermometer reading of 1 degree centigrade, remove the jar from the jacket quickly but without disturbing the oil. So what we have to do at every rise in the temperature, we have to remove the jar. So this jar will be removed from the jacket and inspect or the observe the material for cloudiness. We have to check if it is cloudy or not and replace the jar. So this shall be done within 3 seconds of time. Then if the sample does not show a cloud, then it is cool again to 10 degrees centigrade. So this is like we have to vary the temperatures. Then place the jar and jacket in another bath, maintain a temperature minus 15 to minus 18 degrees centigrade. Then for example, if we have that upon observation, and varying with the varying temperature. For example, if sample reveals cloudiness or haze at the bottom of the jar, then it is nothing but the cloud point. Then it gives the cloud point. So we have to note that temperature as the cloud point. So record the temperature or the reading of the thermometer as the cloud point. So this is how the cloud point is determined. Then what is the pore point? How is it determined? So pore point is nothing but restricting the uh, lubricant to flow, the lowest temperature where the flow is restricted. So at the beginning of the experiment, what happens? At a temperature of 12 degrees centigrade, above the expected pore point. So for example, if we have a pore point of 1, then uh, it should be 12 plus 1, 13. 13 degrees centigrade we have to uh, use at first at that at each temperature reading which is a multiple of 3 degrees centigrade remove the jar from the jacket carefully in both the cases like after multiple of this 3 degrees centigrade like intervals at each intervals at intervals we have to remove the jar from the jacket and then tilt this is the cloud point we are observing just like this but however in the case of pore point we have to tilt, tilt the jar. Then what happens? Tilt the jar and check for movement of that particular lubricant. So if there is tilt, it is just enough to see. So if it is moves, then we have to replace it back. So this shall be done in three seconds of time. So, so as soon as the sample ceases to flow, when the jar is tilted, hold the jar in horizontal position for five seconds. So when we tilt it, when we tilt it like this, there is a uh, uh, there is a restriction of flow. Then it means it is standing just like that. Then we have to uh, put it horizontally, horizontally, just like this in the shown picture. Then wait for five more seconds. So if the, if it shows any movement after uh, putting it in horizontally, if there is some movement, then place it back or replace the jar in the jacket, cool down the temperature to another 3 degrees. So if movement of the oil is uh, not observed, if the oil has no movement, then during the 5 seconds, this again 5 seconds, then record the reading of the temperature, the uh, thermometer. So this uh, no movement, no movement of oil or lubricant, then it is nothing but the Pore point, pore point that we obtain from the thermometer reading. So add 3 degrees to this temperature recorded above and correct the errors like thermometer errors and note down the results as pore point. So this is how we determine cloud and pore points. So what is the use of these uh, determining uh, cloud and pore points? It indicates the suitability of lubricant in cold conditions, they are also useful in identifying the source of lubricating oil as oil derived from petroleum source contain paraffin wax and other high melting fractions which solidify on cooling. So there, uh, there are like uh, they will be uh, we obtain from different sources as we have seen from the classification. So these uh, cold and pore points will indicate where the source of particular lubricating oil. So that is how it will help and also its working function in the cold conditions. So cloud point is useful for estimating the temperature 
at which filter screens in the fuel intake system of diesel engines might become clogged because of separation of wax. For example, this cloud point also will help. For example, we have a certain degree of temperature where cloud point is reaching. So in diesel engines, when we apply these oils, it will help in uh, like um, diesels, uh, it will help in understanding this clogging of that particular engines because of separation of the cracks from the uh, oil. So this is how the cloud point will help in understanding the uh, cloudy, uh, clogging of that particular engine or the cooling down. So a good lubricating oil should possess low cloud and low pore points. So it, uh, the more uh, the lower the cloud and pore points, the uh, the more we can use it for application part. Then the other properties are flash points. Flash point. What is a flash point? Is a uh, flash point of a volatile material is the lowest temperature at which vapors of the material will ignite. Ignite for a moment when an ignition source is brought near. So, for example. Uh, we have taken an example of gasoline and diesel for example when an igniting uh, of, um, uh, fire is near this gasoline it quickly catches the fire so it means it has lower flash point it can quickly catch the fire that is how the flash point is indicated so it is the lowest temperature at which vapors of this particular material will ignite for a moment when the ignition source or the fire is near it so the lubricating oil should have flash point reasonably above its working temperature. So it should not be at its working temperature uh, of any lubricating oil because during usage it can catch fire. Then what is fire point? The fire point of a fuel is uh, the lowest temperature at which vapor of the fuel will continue to burn for at least 5 seconds. So this is the Five seconds. For if it, if for example, if it is burning for five seconds, when um, a temperature at which any fuel burns for five seconds, when the ignition power uh, source is brought near, is nothing but fire point. So that is the fire point of that particular fuel. So fire point is around ten degree higher than flash point. So as soon as it gets it gets ignited, that is a flash point. So upon uh, uh, increasing temperature for 10, deg 10 more degrees, the fire catches. So there is burning taking place. That is nothing but a fire point. Then determination of uh, flash and fire points. So this is also very important because we are applying for different applications in automobiles, uh, machineries and some other uh, uh, areas where a flame can be uh, used. So it is very important for a lubricant to determine its flash and fire points. So for that we are using Pensky Mertens flash point apparatus. This is the apparatus of set up schematic so this is how it originally looks so this is how it originally looks clean the oil cup thoroughly and fill the oil cup with sample so nothing but it has a brass cup brass cup for example here this is the brass cup what is shown in the picture in the schematic this is the brass cup so that has to be filled with the oil till the mark that is given. So then insert the temperature thermometer into the oil cup through a provision. So wherever there is a provision for this is the thermometer that is inserted. So original figure and this is the thermometer that is used uh, for recording temperature which measures the rise of oil temperature and using energy regulator control the power supply given to the temper heater and rate of heating. So we have to use a power supply so that uh, energy regulator or the ignition that is we are giving. So we have to regulately uh, give the power then control the power supply given to the heater and rate of heating. So nothing but there is a brass cup and that should be filled with oil and insert a thermometer. then. Uh, also uh, provide regulatory uh, regulated power supply so that there is a control on heating. So then the oil is heated slowly, slowly 
is very important. Now, when temperature of oil rises, it is checked for the flash point for every one degree rise in temperature. So, whenever they, we are heating, there is rise in the temperature. So, rise in the temperature for that particular lubricant oil. So, we have to record that every each every each and every one degree rise in temperature we have to check for the flash point it means just an ignition so this is the setup then this is the flash point flash point ignition is happening so we have to check whether the ignition is happening or not after determining the flash point the heating shall be further continued so once we get this uh, flashing then the heating is continued to obtain fires that that will give nothing but that will give the fire point so the temperature at which time of flame application which gives burning for a period of 5 degrees so at least for 5 degrees if it is keeping uh, uh, kept on burning if it is burning for at least 5 minutes that is nothing but the fire point that is recorded as fire point so the same experiment is rep uh, repeated for 2 to 3 times and with fresh sample or the oil or lubricant an average of these uh, values are taken for the flash and fire points flash and fire points so flash point will just ignite fire point will give a flame for at least 5 seconds that will indicate the flash and fire points then viscosity the property the other property is the viscosity it is a property of fluid that determines the resistance to flow. So, the flowing resistance, uh, the flowing property is uh, restricted. That is nothing but the viscosity. So, if you see this example, this is the water, colored water that is flowing freely, flowing freely. But however, this is restricted, restricted or slowly flowing. So, nothing but because of, because of viscosity viscous the liquid is viscous so this is the oil this is a colored water so this is highly viscous so it is flowing very slowly so it is an indicator of flowability of any lubricating oil and also lower viscosity uh, the lower the viscosity the flow the greater will be the flowing ability this has lower viscosity lower viscosity so the ability to flow is higher. So if temperature increases, what happens? So when the temperature increases during the operation, the viscosity of the lubricating oil will decrease. And the pressure increases, viscosity of oil will increase. So this is how it affects with pressure and temperature. And the SI units of uh, viscosity is Poisson and other units are Newton per uh, second, Newton second per square meter or pascal second these are the units si units that are used to express viscosity to express viscosity so let us see uh, the uh, for example this is low viscous low viscous this is medium this is high water is having low viscosity then uh, olive oil is having medium viscosity and honey is having highly viscous. So if you see this video also, this is low viscous, this is very low, this is medium, this is medium and this is high. This is high because that is why it is not, it is not flowing. That is how we determine the viscosity, understand the viscosity. Then viscosity is of two types dynamic viscosity and kinematic viscosity so what is the dynamic and kinematic viscosity a dynamic viscosity is also called as absolute viscosity it is defined as a tangential force per unit area which required to maintain a unit velocity gradient between two parallel layers for example if we see this is the flowing oil so it is flowing in some layers together layers together so there is some force so there is some tangential force per unit area per unit area that is required to maintain the velocity of this particular oil is maintained uh, between two uh, layers between these two layers 
so that is nothing but the dynamic velocity or the absolute velocity so it is denoted by nu um, and its cgs unit is poise so this is how dynamic or absolute vel vel viscosity is determined uh, uh, defined then kinematic viscosity it is the ratio of absolute viscosity to its density so the absolute viscosity to its density is nothing but kinematic viscosity when we are saying density it is acting kinematically so it's absolute so if you see this formula it is denoted by a nu and its cgs system is uh, in uh, units in cgs system is strokes strokes so this will give uh, an idea with it depends on it varies kinematic viscosity varies from uh, different lubricate uh, lubricating oils because the density of the oils will differ so this is the absolute absolute viscosity and pi is the, this is the rho is the uh, density density of oil or the lubricant this is how the two types of uh, viscosities are defined so this will help the viscosity of any lubricant will help in selection of good lubricating oil so there are different lubricating oils so the depending on the viscosity factor depending on viscosity factor or the property uh, and the values we determine in selecting the lubricating oils so light oils for example light oils have low densities and easy flow abilities and are used in parts where moving high speed so whenever they, uh, we uh, there are moving parts with high speed we apply low viscous low light oils so that is how we select the lubricating oils for different applications and heavy oils are used on parts moving at very slow speed under heavy loads so this heavy or the high viscous uh, viscous uh, lubricants can be used in heavy loads where slow speed is required so the variation of this viscosity of a liquid with temperature is called as viscosity index so this is the other parameter or the factor or the property where we have to consider the variation of this viscosity with respect to temperature is called as viscosity index every rise in uh, temperature 1 degree rise in temperature where there is a change in the viscosity index of uh, about 2% so this is how uh, um, decreases it it decreases so the viscosity will decrease as we have already seen when there is a rise in temperature the viscosity decreases so the index also decreases with 2% so viscosity increases with temperature for gases for in, in the case of gases it is in uh, the uh, inversely proportional like increase in temperature viscosity increases for gases and decreases for liquids so in our case we are using lubricants lubricants where so, uh, solid liquid and semi solid solid semi solid and liquid they are these are all different from gases so uh, we can only remember that decreases the viscosity decreases for temperatures decreases with the uh, temperatures for the liquids so whenever viscosity whenever temperature increases the viscosity decreases so this uh, viscosity index uh, expressed as a change in um, oil rate of change of oil viscosity or the lubricant viscosity with respect to temperature so for example if the value of this viscosity index is high if it is very high the oil is perfect which means that change in viscosity is low so if uh, viscosity index is high 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 there is no change the uh, visco viscosity viscosity is low or the temperature is with respect to temperature is low for example for paraffinic oils the change is very low and one of the paraffinic oil like pennsylvania oil is given as 100 so for naphthalenic oil it is very high and the naphthalenic oil viscosity index is zero so this is how we categorize the viscosity uh, with respect to temperature indicating with viscosity index thank you
Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.